Hello YouTube and welcome to an all new Elder Scrolls video. Today I want to tell you my vision on how we could design a fun quest line in destroying the Dark Brotherhood. Because as many of you and maybe not even all of you know, in Skyrim you have an option to destroy the Dark Brotherhood. But this quest that the game gives you is just kind of mediocre, it's very anticlimactic. It's a quest where you basically just storm the Dark Brotherhood hideout yourself and kill almost every Brotherhood member. I don't like that. Uh, many others didn't either, so let's see if I can do better. Now, before we begin, this questline as I will present it is loosely based on an Elder Scrolls novel that I wrote of two Penitus Oculatus agents destroying the Dark Brotherhood. That story is pretty okay for my non-native English standards, so if you want to read it spoiler free, I'll put a download link in the description. It isn't super great, but it's essentially this proposed quest in novel form for you to read, except a little different because I do have my story characters leave the province of Skyrim at some point. Meanwhile, the story here is contained to Skyrim for gameplay purposes to have it fit in with the vanilla game. Anyway, let's get to the quest. First of all, this proposed quest is made for do-good characters, so it will not feature any murdering of citizens. No, not even Grelot the Kind, who isn't all that kind. So let's start with the first quest, which I'll call Discovery. So I propose that this quest begins at the Penitus Oculatus outpost in Dragonbridge, where you would usually find Commander Morrow, who heads the division of the Penitus Oculatus, which is the Emperor's protection force and also the Empire's sort of CIA slash KGB. They really aren't that great in Skyrim, but in the lore they are pretty great. I made a whole lore for you on them. It's in the description if you want to watch it. While the Penitus Oculatus is usually very secretive and doesn't really share anything with regular citizens, for the sake of this quest and because Skyrim literally allows you as random nobody to walk up to rulers and then ask them things and work for them without any proof of loyalty, I will continue this proud Skyrim tradition. You as the player would be able to ask him whether he has any work for you and he would tell you that there have been several seemingly non-connected murders across Skyrim. He then informs you of the murders of Bertild in Dawnstar, Narfi in Iverstad, Enodius Papius the Miller and finally Grelot the Kind in Riften. He would say that the murders don't seem connected but that one of his agents picked up the rumor that they were carried out by the Dark Brotherhood, an organization suspected to be destroyed. He can't spare the manpower to send a couple of agents to investigate, so he asks you to help out the one agent that he could assign, who's currently investigating the murder of Bertilt and Dawnstar, to see if she can find a connection. This character will be your companion character for the quest. Let's call her Ingrid, because that's her name in my story, so that makes it easier for me. Uh, anyway, you then have the choice to either go directly to her, locking you onto the quest line, or you have the choice to investigate the murders that she isn't investigating, uh, before you go to her. This will be a pivotal choice as if you investigate alone there will be an option to be ambushed by Astrid and join the Dark Brotherhood with your initiation being to kill Ingrid to make it look like an accident and shut down the investigation into the Brotherhood. Then the Brotherhood questline can proceed as normal in the game. Uh, this option is important as for some players talking to Commander Morrow will be the first time that they even hear of the Dark Brotherhood. They won't ever hear of Aventus Aretino or Gil Grelet themselves, so this option needs to stay open for people who talk to Commander Morrow first, so that they can, you know, still join the Dark Brotherhood and not be locked out. Anyway, if you do choose not to betray the Penitus Oculatus, you investigate murders, either with Ingrid or without her, presenting her what you found afterward. These investigations will come in the form of interrogating the local population about motives for the murders, asking for rumors at local taverns and asking the guard what they found. Uh, using the investigation you'll learn some things about how the victims have been murdered, all in the same way with two jagged daggers, so basically two blade of woes like we see them in Skyrim. This would obviously be a different character model, so the player could clearly see the difference between this uh, kind of murder and a regular Skyrim dead body. It would be kind of pivotal for the quest later on as you'll see. That way you and your partner connect the dots and you conclude that yeah these murders are connected or at least performed by the same killer and in the end you arrive at a rumor of Aventus Aretino being into some shady dealings and having the orphanage he left having that left behind in a disgruntled fashion some time ago. 
So then quest number two starts, which would be following the trail. You and Ingrid then decide to go and question Avengers Aretino, where he tells you after some persuasion that he tried to summon the Brotherhood through the Black Sacrament, and that someone dressed in Brotherhood robes actually did show up, making you and Ingrid conclude that it is indeed the Dark Brotherhood carrying out these murders, or at least some mercenary trying to use the infamous Brotherhood reputation to get work. When asked about how he knows how to perform the Black Sacrament, he will give you the in-game book A Kiss Sweet Mother, which teaches one how to perform the Black Sacrament. Now, here we have to make a modification to Skyrim. Uh, we have to make this book significantly rarer in the game than it is in the current game, because right now you can find it on basically every table. But we have to make it so that this book can only be found in really shady places for this part of the quest to work. Because Aventus Aretino will tell you that he bought it from a Khajiit caravan, which are known to deal in these kind of shady things. You then leave Aventus Aretino B as he just promises to return to the orphanage, which he actually does in the vanilla game after your conversation with him, and you go and find one of the three Khajiit caravans roaming around Skyrim. You can ask the Khajiit merchants who bought the book of them recently, that way Ingrid hopes to predict the next victims by questioning those who want to hire the Brotherhood, or at least seem like they want to hire it because they bought the book describing the Black Sacrament. You also hope to find out more about the murderer, so the assassin, because all Aventus Aretino could tell you was that it was a dark elf in Brotherhood robes covering his face with a cowl. The Khajiit merchants, however, are far from cooperative as they wish to keep their reputation of discretion up, so you'd have to either pass a speech check, persuade them by purchasing some of their wares at like an inflated price to get them to like you, or find another way to get the information out of them, so for example threatening them with violence or pickpocketing them. I don't know, some sales ledger or something like that. Since there's three Khajiit garavans, there's multiple chances, and the Khajiit have excellent reputations as being discreet merchants, I think the skill checks for these options should be really hard, so it should be easy to fail the speech checks or a strength check for threatening them. The only reliable option should be to bribe them by purchasing some wares at inflated prices before the Khajiit will talk, that way people that don't have the right amount of skills to pass the speech checks will still be able to proceed with the quest. And then even if the Khajiit talks, he will be really vague, telling you only that the book has been popular with Breton alchemists in Markarth, or the sales ledger will just mention selling a book to uh, Breton alchemists in Markarth, thus sending you on another investigation to Markarth, where you will eventually find Muiri, the alchemist who hired the Brotherhood through the Black Sacrament, to kill the bandit Alain Dufon, which we actually meet in the main quest, so here... This quest sort of mirrors the Dark Brotherhood questline. Initially, Muiri will flee when Ingrid shows her Penetus Oculatus amulet, and identifying her as an agent. But when you catch her, she will describe the assassin that had came to her. She will describe them as once again a dark elf, but this time he'd been in plain disguise, and she could describe him as having dark hair, red eyes, and small golden earrings. She also tells you that she paid the assassin for a job well done when he returned to her, and paid him not only in gold, but with an old family heirloom, a richly decorated Reachman flute with historical significance, since she had no other way of paying the assassin the amount of gold that he was owed. This gives you an all new lead, as Muiri describes the flute to be so rare that realistically in Skyrim only the Bard's College of Solitude would be willing to buy it for a reasonable price for its historical value. So the assassin would have to sell it to them if he wants to get his money's worth. So this is where this quest ends and quest number 3, Wedding Bells, starts. So you and your companion Ingrid head for Solitude to the Bard's College, but when you arrive in Solitude you find Commander Morrow stopping you when you enter the city. He is calling up Ingrid to help with the security of an upcoming event, the wedding of Vittoria Vici and Asgir Snowshod. Commander Morrow tells you that he is significantly understaffed, despite the Emperor himself guaranteeing the security of the wedding as his wedding gift to the couple. Because of this significant understaffing problem, he asks you to help out as well, after your companion Ingrid vouches for your trustworthiness. At the wedding you essentially play a guard, how exactly we could make this quest work, I don't really know. Um, what kind of mechanic would be there, maybe something new that we would program into Skyrim. Uh, but essentially you're a guard, and in the end you or Ingrid end up seeing a dark elf matching the description of Muiri in the crowd, and you and her end up ambushing him in a corridor of the Solitude Temple, where he's trying to sneak towards a statue where that he wants to crash into Victoria Vici and Asgir while they are speaking to the crowd at their wedding, which is actually what you do as the assassin in the regular Dark Brotherhood questline. So this dark elf is essentially our character, 
in the Dark Brotherhood questline in the vanilla game, but you as Penetus Oculatus agents cannot chase him in that sense. This is supposed to be a really hard fight, and when he reaches about half of his HP, two other Brotherhood members, Festus Crax and Gabriella, come into the corridor disguised as guards. Those two will throw you and Ingrid on your back, allowing the Dark Elf, who is the listener in this scenario as I said, to escape and kill Vittoria Vici. While he escapes after the murderer, you and Ingrid do manage to kill Gabriella and restrain Festus with a powerful spell after other Penitus Oculatus agents make it up to the tower after the murder. Festus is then imprisoned by Commander Morrow, but he won't speak, so that provides no further lead for you now. So that ends the quest, the wedding bells, but then quest 4, which I will call Brick Wall, starts. Now that the wedding is over, you have time to check out the Bard's College and ask around whether or not you, they received any offers to purchase the flute. When you and Ingrid talk to Headmaster Vyarmo, you find out that they have indeed been contacted to purchase a rare Reachman flute by an anonymous merchant from Sentinel. You and Ingrid then either have the choice to go with one of the college's traveling bards as his guards, or investigate the lead yourself. That traveling bard would be the one that would purchase the flute. If you investigate the lead yourself, you will discover that the merchant is in fact a Dark Brotherhood member in disguise, Nazir, uh, for those basically all of us who have played the Dark Brotherhood questline before. If you choose to go yourself, there's no other option than violence. You will have to end up killing him as he will attack you on the spot when he has an idea of who you are and then you loot the flute off him essentially. If you choose to go with the bard from the college, in my novel he is an Argonian raised by Nords with a passion for Nordic songs. Uh, could be an interesting side character, although not fully lore, lore friendly from the top of my head. Anyway, when you go with him you have the choice to have the bard do all the talking, in which case you can do this quest without any violence as the bard will buy the flute of Nazir, after which you can kill him anyway if you want. Uh, my original intention for this quest was that you should try and follow him and discover the Dark Brotherhood hideout, but Skyrim doesn't really have any good sneak follow mechanics like some other AAA games, uh, since the engine doesn't really seem to support that far as I know. So I can't really implement that since we don't have any means of sneaking all the way across Skyrim like that. Um, although we could also do the meetup in like Falkreath or something. Um, but for now, we will have to save the discovering the Dark Brotherhood hideout for later, since we don't have any good sneaking mechanics. Anyway, without any clues left to speak of, you and Ingrid head back to Solitude to report to Commander Morrow the failure of your mission, as you are all out of leads. And your one prisoner that you have, which is fast as cracks in a dungeon, isn't talking, so you have essentially hit an impassable brick wall, hence the name of the quest. So that ends this quest, and then we start the next quest, which is called Treason in the Ranks. When you return to Solitude's Castle Dower, where now Commander Morrow has built himself a sort of command post after the whole wedding fiasco, you see that Commander Morrow is in serious distress as his son has been brutally murdered in Dragonbridge. And to make matters worse, the Solitude guard who found his body found a letter incriminating his son, Gaius Morrow, in a plot to murder the Emperor on commission of the Snowshot family. Because the Emperor is scheduled to visit Skyrim soon in an attempt to personally apologize to the Snowshot family for failing to present their son's murder at their wedding. As remember, he was the one that guaranteed the security of the wedding, a security which horribly failed. Commander Morrow refuses to believe it and goes into a bit of a meltdown due to the combination of losing his son and the implication that his son may be a traitor. He will yell at both you and Ingrid for even suggesting an investigation into the possible implication of his son, as his son isn't a traitor. At this, Ingrid scolds him for not thinking clearly, after which the commander calms down and falls into a defeated depression, retreating to his chambers in Castle Dower. You and Ingrid then search the commander's office and quickly find the letter incriminating Gaius Morrow in the murder of the Emperor. Ingrid immediately sees through the ruse as there are multiple errors in the hastily forged letter, among which the error of misspelling the name of the Snowshot's father, which is actually in the game by the way, his name is spelled wrong in the letter. I don't know if it was intentional or not. Maybe someone at Bethesda was like, well let's show them that this is a fake letter, but in the vanilla game it's good for you if the letter is correct since you're playing at the Dark Brotherhood so I don't really know why the name is spelled wrong. Anyway, not a very good plan by the Dark Brotherhood. So you then decide to try and clear Gaius Morrow's name by examining his body. Remember that if you haven't played the Dark Brotherhood questline and this hypothetical Penitus Oculatus questline would exist in the game, there is no visible connection to the Dark Brotherhood here. Only if you've played the other side of the coin, so the actual vanilla Dark Brotherhood quest, 
You would know that the listener murdered Gaius in an attempt to distract Commander Moro and tip, trip him off his guard. Uh, I mean, to a first time player, it could also seem like Gaius may have been killed by a Stormcloak sympathizer or something and been implicated in something stupid. Since it's basically a Destroy the Dark Brotherhood questline, that wouldn't really make any sense. I mean, you would probably connect the dots, but if you're really dense, you might believe that something else is going on. But even if you do believe that something else is going on, that will change when you two travel to Dragon Bridge to examine Gaius Maro's body. You can clearly see that the man has been murdered in the same fashion as the first four victims that you initially investigated at the start of the quest. And remember the first four murders that you could either investigate with Ingrid or at your, uh, at your own. Again, this would obviously be a different character model, so the players could clearly see the difference between this and a regular Skyrim dead body. So, you connect the dots, and you connect the dots that he has been murdered by the Dark Brotherhood as well. Then, you have quest number 6, which is called To Save an Empire. Because you and Ingrid then have a conversation with Commander Maro after reporting who his son has been killed by. This straightens the Commander Maro out and he becomes focused again, especially after Ingrid suggests that while his son might not be an assassin and the latter was almost certainly forged, it's possible the Dark Brotherhood is aiming to assassinate the Emperor since all of it too conveniently aligns. The Emperor forced to visit Skyrim due to a Dark Brotherhood murder and then a fake assassination plot exposed by a Dark Brotherhood assassin implicating treason in the ranks of the Penance Oculatus. Having Gaius killed as a possible assassin would lead them to a false sense of security, just like the Brotherhood intends in the original questline, and you thus conclude that the Emperor must be the target of another Dark Brotherhood assassination. Commander Morrow then offers to cancel the Emperor's visit altogether, despite the political repercussions of angering the Snowshots even more. In the case of a Stormcloak victory, they are very influential, and probably they need... Uh, to be in contact with the Empire or something and they can't be afford to anger much more. And if the Civil War is still going on or the Empire has won, then it's important to keep them happy since they're very influential with all the Stormcloak sympathizers. But you and Ingrid get to work first. You are going to try and find weaknesses in the Emperor's security plan for the day of his visit. For this quest you will go over several documents of the proposed security for the visit and this is essential to the ending of the questline that you will get because this questline will have multiple endings. Within three in-game days you will have to try and find the discrepancy in the documents which is not super obvious or if you don't find it in time Commander Mara will cancel the Emperor's visit. So if you don't find what's wrong with the documents that would technically be a good ending to the quest as you foiled the brotherhood's plan and the emperor is alive but the brotherhood is still out there and without any leads to go on you will not find them again commander morrow and ingrid will simply thank you and reward you with quite a sum of gold but you will lose ingrid as a companion as she returns to a debrief in cyrodiil and you will get the occasional random encounter where the dark brotherhood assassins that we have in the game actually ambushing you um, will ambush you more frequently after the completion of this quest, as they know that you were involved in foiling their plan. But if you do find a discrepancy in the document, so you do find out what's wrong, and this will be pretty well hidden in like a cross-reference between two books, not too hard, but a decent challenge for you to read some stuff for once in Skyrim, you would find out that during his visit the Emperor would be served by the elusive Gourmet, uh, the anonymous chef from the original questline. However, the Penitus Oculatus never lets anyone without screening close to the Emperor, so he has been screened by a trusted Penitus Oculatus officer who gave him a writ of passage. But if you cross-reference two documents, you will find out that Gaius Maro was the one who screened him as a trusted soldier of the Emperor. So you and Ingrid can conclude that Gaius Maro is the only one who knows what the Gourmet looked like, so nobody on the day of the visit would know what the gourmet actually looked like since Gaius Morrow is dead. So anyone, like an assassin, would be able to pass through if they had the writ of passage stolen from the gourmet, as of course happens in the vanilla questline. You present this to Commander Morrow, who proposes to have a decoy emperor attend the meal, while the man himself waits on the ship until they dealt with the assassination plot. You then plan to ambush the assassin together with Ingrid and Commander Morrow after the assassin attempts to kill the Emperor somehow. Then you need to wait three or one in-game day for the visit, depending on how long it took for you to get the discrepancy. However, on the day of the visit, in the morning, when you have to report yourself to Commander Morrow, you will find that Commander Morrow has a visitor. 
Astrid of the Dark Brotherhood has come to make a proposal. She wants Festus Cracks released from the dungeons and for the Penates Oculatus to leave the Dark Brotherhood alone. In return, Commander Morrow gets information on the Assassin's plan, which is looking to assassinate the Emperor. And the Dark Brotherhood will also pinky promise that they would never be anywhere near the Imperial government again with any assassinations. Commander Morrow reluctantly agrees with this and then after releasing Festus gets confirmation that the assassin indeed plans to enter as the gourmet. The rest of the quest would be pretty straightforward. The next day you and Ingrid together with the commander wait on the bridge to saw into the solitude windmill and you fight the assassin which is supposed to be a really hard fight again and then you kill the assassin. Commander Morrow then immediately orders you and Ingrid to get ready to travel to Falkreath as he had one of his other agents follow Astrid and Festus as they made their way back to the hideout and that agent discovered the location of the Dark Brotherhood hideout. Only at this very point uh, will the raid on the Dark Brotherhood sanctuary begin which in a vanilla game you do alone and without any context. You and Ingrid here will do it together with several agents and kill every single Brotherhood member and set the entire hideout ablaze, just as happens in the actual vanilla questline when Astrid is actually betrayed by Commander Morrow. So you literally play the other side of the coin here. So good job, you did it, Dark Brotherhood completely destroyed. Then the final quest would be quest 7, which is epilogue, where you return to Castle Dower, doing a job well done. And you find the Emperor in the throne room of the Castle Dower, which goes unused in the vanilla game. The throne room's there, but you never use it. You only briefly see it when you go in there as the assassin. There the Emperor will personally reward you and Ingrid for your services with the same amount of gold that Commander Morrow gives you in the early ending. But in addition to that, he will also make you an honorary member of the Penitus Oculatus, since one can only join the organization from either a very young age or be personally taken in by the Emperor. So he makes you a member, not the leader of other factions in the game, uh, because that would be very weird. Like it's weird with all the other factions in the game. And he will reward you with a unique set of Penates Oculatus armor with special enchantments which are good for sneaking and good for like one hand and shield build, since that's what most agents use in the game. And your final reward will be that after Ingrid leaves Skyrim on the Kataraya, the Emperor's ship, to escort the Emperor home, she will return after an in-game week as a companion and possible romance option. Oh, and you get the chance to do miscellaneous Penitus Oculatus quests maybe. I don't know, I didn't really think that far ahead. I don't know, maybe simple, solve simple mysteries, solve murders, whatever. Uh, I don't really know what the Penitus Oculatus would do in Skyrim after the Brotherhood is destroyed. Or maybe you can spy on local people for the Emperor. Anyway, tell me what you think. And um, if you took the time to read my novel, what did you think of that? I'm very curious to hear, especially since that version of the questline is kind of different as I don't need to keep to gameplay restrictions. Um, I personally like the novel version better. Um, but hey, can't do everything in the Skyrim engine. Anyway, a bit of a different video from normal, not a lore video. Those will be back soon, don't worry. I've been very busy, uh, but yeah, hopefully next Saturday another regular lore video again. I hope you like it, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Tell me in the comments what you think of this questline, I'm really curious.